when I was dating, I would frequently ask the question, what is the point of getting married? Uh, when my husband and I first met, we hit it off so quickly, we immediately knew something real was there. But over time, we started having conflict, and we started realizing each other's habits that we didn't like and we didn't respect. And at some point, I was like, is this a sign that we shouldn't be together? With all of these negative experiences and pain, or is there something else there? Because I still have a lot of evidence that this is the guy for me. So many relationships are not a good and healthy fit, but conflict, disconnect, and immaturity are present in every marriage, even the healthy ones. And the difference between the healthy marriages and those that are not is how the couple responds to conflict. The nature of marriage causes friction. When two different people come together and function as one unit, there are differences that test us, and those differences are what make or break us. They either cause hurt, a pulling away, and a lack of trust, or they can bring us closer together. Improving our communication, growing in resilience, not relying on our partner for affirmation, and growing in patience. In Christianity, it's called sanctification. Every moment of friction is an opportunity to become more Christ-like, not asserting my power, honoring the other because they're a child of God, and not repaying wrong for wrong, and doing good to my husband even when he doesn't deserve it. I think that's the major difference between what the media tells us about marriage and what our creator intended it to be like. The media says that it's the cherry on top to your life's happiness. The other outlook says this is going to help you honor God with your life, which I believe is the purpose of life. And yes, a healthy marriage is a source of happiness, but it's so much more than that. Unity. Two people being united as one. I remember when I was considering the amount of trust it would take to invest in a healthy marriage. At the time, I might have trusted people with small things or things that didn't really matter to me, but everything that was important to me I held control of very closely. And so the idea of putting my well-being in the care of someone else who has faults was incredibly frightening to me, and I had a panic attack one time. Over time, I realized that having that mutual trust is incredibly beautiful, and even though there's risk, the reward is good. Before we were married, my husband and I were debating something very intensely. Uh, we both felt very strongly about our side, and we came to an impasse, um, and that was a really heavy burden because it wasn't a subject we could just brush over and let sit. Uh, so after making our cases for an hour, my husband chose to give up his stance and accept mine. I don't even remember what the debate was about, but he surrendered his way to choose our relationship over being right. I was flabbergasted and grateful because his surrender allowed us to continue in relationship. And it wasn't even because he was on board with what I was saying. It was because he felt that unity in our relationship was more important. It blew my mind. He lovingly submitted to me so that both of us could win the argument through his sacrifice. And being the recipient of that, of something good and pure and supernatural, made me realize that I could love him in that way also. So this is an example of Christ-like submission. And submission is such a trigger word because it's been used so often to control others. But aside from the way that people have perverted and misused that, my understanding of submission is that it is something offered, not demanded. It is something given and not taken. And it's given out of love and a place of peace. Scripture calls Christians to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So submitting is a way that I can honor God in my interactions with everyone. So how much more important is it in a marriage relationship? And seeing how good it is from my husband's example, I get to do that. I get to honor and to trust him in that way. It unifies us. It's one of the ways that we can maneuver through the friction of our relationship 
in a way that helps us to flourish. So the overall answer that I found to the question, what is the purpose of marriage, is to honor God and to reflect his goodness more fully. It's not about me just having the life that I want. The two subjects that I brought up, unity through friction and submission to one another, are just two of probably 50 subjects that I've discovered on this topic. The next subjects that come to mind are selflessness, commitment, the purpose of sex and marriage. It would take a book to scratch the surface of all 50. Being a Christian all my life, I never really understood why marriage mattered. I think most people would struggle to answer that question, but I want to tell everyone that there is more, and I'm going to share as much as I can about what I've learned because it's just too good not to. 